welcome to week 2 topic 3 in the second topic we have discussed application of standard error of mean normality of distribution of standard error of mean variability of sample mean and the spread of sample mean around the population mean and measure of divergence of sample mean from population mean confidence interval etc now in this topic we shall discuss the significance of test of significance of small sample t distribution and degree of freedom level of significance generally we use two level of significance 0 0.05 level of significance and 0 0.01 level of significance let us consider 0 0.05 level of significance in the range m plus minus 1.96 sigma m probability of population mean being in the range is 95 percent that is our probability is 0.95 and probability of population mean being outside this range is 5 percent that is p is equal to 0.5 1.96 is called critical value at 0 0.05 level of significance here we can make our interpretation that we are 95 percent correct that population mean between sample mean plus minus 1.96 sigma m alternatively we can say that we are 95 percent correct however we are 5 percent wrong that population mean lies outside this interval the interval is sample mean plus minus 1.96 sigma m consider 0 0.01 level of significance in this range mean plus minus 2.58 sigma m sigma m standard error of mean probability of population mean being in the range is 99 percent and probability of population mean being outside this range is 1 percent that is 2.58 is called the critical value of 0 0.101 0 0.01 level of significance level of significance is inversely related to the extent of precision confidence interval is equal to mean plus minus sampling error sampling error is equal to critical value into standard error of mean let us discuss the test of significance for small value in the previous chapter topic we have discussed significance of large sample now we will discuss the test of significance of small sample small sample where the value of n is less than 30 if the value of n is less than 30 we call it a small sample so standard deviation of population is denoted by sigma standard deviation of sample is denoted by small s mathematically standard deviation of sample is less than the standard deviation of population smaller the sample size greater is the difference between standard deviation of a population and standard deviation of sample on increasing the sample size the difference between s and sigma reduces if x is e represent individual score m is equal to mean n is the sample size s is equal to root over of sum of x minus m whole square divided by n minus 1 where the root over is the numerator and denominator overall root over sigma m is equal to s by root over of n where s is standard deviation of small sample sigma m is equal to sum of the scores square of the scores by n minus 1 root over therefore standard deviation of mean sample mean is equal to sum of square of scores by n into n minus 1 root over let us consider t distribution we have already discussed the concept of sampling distribution in case of small sample where n is less than 30 the sampling distribution is called t distribution on comparing t distribution curve with normal curve you will find that t distribution curve always lies under the normal distribution curve tails of t distribution curve lies above the normal distribution curve the unit along the baseline of t distribution 
are standard scores. So T is equal to M minus population mean divided by standard error of mean. On increasing N, N represent size of sample. On increasing N, T distribution curve approaches closer to the normal distribution curve. So sample size is very important which signifies whether the distribution is closer to normal distribution or the distribution is away from the normal distribution or deviates the normal distribution. T distribution differ largely from normal distribution if and only if size of the sample is quite small. Otherwise, T distribution does not differ from the normal distribution. Let us discuss the characteristics of a T distribution. It is a symmetrical set about t is equal to 0. It is unimodal with maximum ordinate at a t is equal to 0. It is a bell shaped curve like normal curve. So the t shape of t distribution curve is at par equal to the normal distribution curve depending upon the size of a, the sample size. So greater the sample size, closer is the match between the normal distribution curve and t distribution curve. Distribution is more variable with zero skewness and ketosis greater than 3. It approaches normality on increasing the size of sample. Degree of freedom. Degree of freedom is very important. Degree of freedom indicates freedom to vary or number of restrictions imposed. For example, let us consider a group of 5 students of standard 10 whose mean is 50 in science. If the four scores are 42, 58, 37 and 62, then the fifth score must be 51. There are no other options or there is no other alternatives for the fifth score. That is, n is equal to 5, degree of freedom represent n minus 1. So, 5 minus 1 which is equal to 4. There are freedom, flexibility to choose any four scores out of the five. There is no restriction on the first four scores, but there is a restriction on the fifth score. Because there are variations brought about by selecting the first scores in exercising the freedom, in exercising the flexibility. Fifth score is meant to make an adjustment in the variation, to make it ensure that the mean is 50. So, in this case, we have 4 degrees of freedom. Means, the first 4 scores may have any values, but there is restriction to 5th score, where n is equal to 5, degree of freedom is equal to n minus 1, so that is 5 minus 1, which we call 4. So, the number of restrictions is 1. Number of degree of freedom depends upon the number of restrictions imposed on the observations. One degree of freedom is lost for each restriction. With 99.73% confidence, we can say that mean of the population lies above the sample mean plus minus 3 sigma. The degree of confidence is expressed by P is equal to 0.9973. We are 99.73% correct that population mean lies between sample mean plus minus 1.3 sigma m. Conversely, we are 1% wrong that mean of the population lies outside the interval. That is sample mean plus minus 3 sigma m. Let us consider the second case. Refer to the normal probability curve. 95% cases lies between m plus minus 1.96 sigma m. All sample means will be between population mean plus minus 1.96 sigma m. m plus minus 1.96 sigma m defines 95% confidence interval between the limit sample mean plus minus 1.96 sigma m. Remember, degree of freedom are not always n minus 1. It varies with the nature of the problem, it varies with number of restrictions imposed on the observations. For example, 
by comparing the two means when data are pair, degree of freedom is equal to number of pairs minus one. Similarly, in case of square test, chi-square test and analysis of variance, separate procedure is followed in finding the degree of freedom. Details about it, we shall be discussed in the next week. So now I hope the concept is clear to you how to find out the assess the sum degree of freedom, how to find out the level of confidence and the critical value. You are going to respond to the forum questions, review document and finally assess with the help of a small self-check test. I hope you will enjoy the week, you will enjoy this particular topic and will be able to apply it in your research problem, in your research study. Wish you all the best.